Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK, and I just want to welcome you to my channel if it's the first time you're coming, and yeah, subscribe, like, share, whatever. Um, basically, I'd come across a, um, a, a YouTube video, and it kind of caught my eye, and I thought, you know what, that's pretty interesting. I'm going to let you see it. The title is, Parents Send Children to Africa to avoid a search in UK knife crime. Heritage are being sent to Africa by their parents to avoid the rising threat of knife crime in the UK. The East African nation itself has a reputation for being one of the most dangerous countries in the world, with the UK Foreign Office indeed warning not to travel there because of the threat of terrorist attacks and kidnapping. Artist Kate Partridge looks into why the Somalian community considers Britain a greater threat to their children. Stabbings of young people across England have become an epidemic. In those few years I was doing my A-levels, it was tough. Just seeing people being dropped every other day, being stabbed. London's not the place to be for a teenager. We know. Yeah, so they've interviewed quite a few children and they're saying that it's not the place to be for a teenager in the in UK anymore. And I did do a video um, a few, maybe a few months, a few weeks, I can't remember, about whether or not London is the place for black boys. Now, this, what's happening here now is that people from Somalia, Kenya and different parts of Africa have now realised that London is not the place for their children and they are taking them back to Africa. Now, there's a misconception by a lot of white people that who think that people, um, the black people who come over to the UK from places like Africa, the Caribbean, Asia, well, I'm not sure about Asia, but African and the Caribbean in particular, that they come over here because England or London or the United States is a better place. And, you know, to get away from all the poverty and the flies that they show you on the TV, that is not the case. For those of people who have been to parts of Africa that is beautiful, westernised, you know, it's got all the roads, it's got all the buildings, and Jamaica is like a paradise. People don't leave those hot countries because England is better or the United States is better. They leave those countries because the currency is better and they believe that by coming to the UK or by going to the United States, that because the value of their indigenous dollar is not worth much, that they can actually come to these countries, make some money, and their intention is to go back home. What invariably happens is that they get caught up in the system and that the money that they're able to have, they find that it just keeps seeping out. They don't get to accumulate wealth. They don't get to accumulate the dollar or the sterling, which is what, which is why they came here in the first place, because the bills outweigh the money that they're making. And so then they find, of, find out that they're better off in the country that they were born. Some of them are too embarrassed to go back. Some of them don't want to go back without anything after they've boasted that they're going to come to these Western countries, only to find out that it's like they've fallen into a trap a money trap. So what has lured them in is not enough. And then they're not only lured into these unsafe countries, because they are unsafe for black people. They don't have the money to get out. So they're stuck. They're trapped. They've been entrapped. And so that is the situation with a lot of people. So now what's happening with the parents of these young boys, fortunately for those who do come from outside Africa and who may not have their papers or who may not, um, who may have links to those countries, they can go back. But for a lot of black people, especially the black people born in Britain, where do they go? They are lumbered here, they're stuck here with this dangerous situation. There's nowhere for them to run to. They can't say they're going to Jamaica or or um, Barbados or Trinidad because we are not from there. And, uh, you know, the same way as um, England would expect those from coming in, those from the outside coming in have to go through a due process and apply for 
um, apply for leave to remain, people, black children born in the UK cannot do that. On what basis would they be going back to the country of their parents? On what basis? So especially if their parents have passed on. I mean, if their parents are living in the country, then the parents can file for them the same way it works in the UK. But I couldn't say I'm born here. I couldn't just get up and say, oh, I'm going to go and live in Africa unless I have something to offer, like what England expects people from the outside to offer here, which is money. So I'd have to go there with massive skills and say, OK, I've got this to offer Africa. I've, you know, I'm a I'm a. I've got a PhD in civil engineering or something. And then they might say, OK, this is a worth in, worthwhile investment. We don't mind this young lady coming into our country. But we can't just get up and go unless we have something to offer the country. If we've got a lot of dosh they, and we're going to um, invest in properties, they'll probably let us go over. But I don't believe we can just get up and go without having an allegiance to somebody in that country. So what else was I going to say? So East Africa has a reputation of being dangerous, but who gave it that reputation? We don't know. Because what the only thing that we see, unless you've been there, is what they portray on the media. And we know that the media is biased. All we see is kids with flies coming out of their mouths, starving, looking for water with bony legs, asking for our help. That's the image we see of Africa. But that is not Africa. That is not Africa. It exists in certain parts of Africa the same way as poverty exists in certain parts of the United Kingdom. I was horrified yesterday when I went into the town centre and saw crippled, disabled people begging on the streets under blankets, some of them sleeping on the streets, some of them are under the bridges in the UK, which is supposed to be a civilised country. People have been forced out of their homes, whether it's through universal credit, whether it's through poor life choices. It exists. What is the difference? The only difference is that there's no flies and these people may have access to water if they can go sneak into a pub or somewhere where they can access water. But if people see them coming, they're shutting their doors. So a lot of them, they don't have access to that. So they have um, food banks. Some of them have shelters. Some of them don't want to go to shelters for whatever reason. I don't know what the reason is. I think you have to be qualified to go to a shelter anyway. So if you're illegal, I'm not even sure if you have you can access shelters. So you've got these people on the street, so there's no difference. It's all relative. Um, oh, yeah, one boy was saying, at least when I'm in Kenya, I don't have to look over my shoulder. There's no racism. You don't have to worry if the police are going to kill you. You don't have to worry if they're going to stop you in a car, unless you're behaving in such a manner that they have to. But you know that there's not going to be bias in the same way as there is in the UK and the United States. So when you go back, for those people who are privileged enough to go back to Africa or the Caribbean, they can actually be free if they haven't left any bad legacies behind. I mean, the wrong you do follows after you. So I'm not saying everybody can just get up and go. We don't know what legacy they left behind. But assuming you're the normal, hardworking person who's decided that Africa is safer than England or London, then you can go back and have that freedom to go and live comfortably. You might not have enough money, but this, these are situations where money doesn't mean squat when your life is in danger. Sometimes you have to weigh up the cost of the value of money over your life and over your peace of mind. A lot of people, they've got no peace of mind. They don't know if they can pay their rent. They don't know if they're going to get a job. They don't know. They don't know what's happening from one day to the next. And on top of that, they're worrying about their children if they send them to school. Yeah, accidents and crime happens all over the world. But in the UK and America, it's more targeted. So I'm not saying that in, in these other countries it's not going to happen, but it's, they're not targeting you because you're a black person and they don't like you. 
So, like I said, it's not a generalisation, but experience tells us that there's racial profiling going on with the police. We know that the, the facial recognition um, is biased in favour of recognising black people. So we know the odds are against us. So let's not pull the wool over our eyes and say it's something different. It's just hard to, when you hear it out, you know, out in the open, it's a bit difficult to digest. But it happens. It is happening. Um, I think what well, in that video, it said that uh, um, the authorities are saying now is the highest level of knife crime. 50 people stabbed since January. It's gone. It's gone a bit quiet now, though. Thank God. I haven't heard of a knife stabbing. Not maybe I'm out of the loop, but I haven't heard of a knife stabbing over the last couple of weeks. I really haven't. So hopefully it's gone quiet and these young boys are realising it's not worth it and their parents are taking more control over them. Um, Central London, it went up between, from 650 to 985 uh, between the year 2017 and 2018. Kensington and Chelsea, hike of 25%. From 262 stabbings to 328. Savage Javid is saying knife crime is now a national emergency. Any excuse to get bloody 20,000, to authorise 20,000 people to be on the streets to call more, cause more damage. I mean, 20,000, isn't that a bit much? When you're thinking about the ratio of deaths. Yes, there are deaths. 50 deaths since January. Does that, does that qualify 20,000 police officers? Oh, um, so is Africa safer than London? I would say at the moment it is much safer. You might not have the money, but you have the peace of mind. Um, let me see what else. Yeah, I think that's all I'm going to say for now. Um, I know I'm going to get a ruckus for this one, but hey, I'll put up my armour and my shield and stand protected. Bye for now.